Next move is on as Emerson Royale has arrived in Tottenham. He arrived on Monday, um, or maybe it was Sunday, um, but he has arrived. Mm. He has been here for the last couple of days, putting pictures all over Instagram in his lovely Tottenham training gear. Um, and it's just great to have him. Do you think he comes straight in on the weekend? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, I don't. Jake? I, th- I, th- I don't think he does because I think because Tanganga has been... Because we kept three clean sheets and Tanganga's been solid at the back um, and, we, you know, and we're also coming up against a Palace side who are very tricky customers in um, you know, Wilfred Zaha and, um, and players of that ilk. I think he's going to keep Tanganga for the time being. I don't think he'll want to just completely unsettle a backline which is performing fairly well at the moment. And I know I've been, I was critical of uh, Tanganga's performance against Palace, but I, st- I do believe he's had a really good start to the season. And defensively, he's been pretty much faultless, mm. um, apart from obviously some struggles he had against Adama Traore. But I think apart from that, he's been really strong. So I, I think, it was, I think um, he's going to make Emerson fight for it. I don't think he's going to give it straight away to Emerson. Um, but I do, I do believe he'll win that place eventually. I think he'll probably start on Thursday against Wren. That's my prediction. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then uh, hopefully he can earn his way into the team. And I believe once Emerson gets into the team, we're going to have two fullbacks who are very pacey and a lot more comfortable on the ball as well, which is going to be very, very positive as we do now. As much as I'm enjoying Tanganga and how aggressive he's been, I just always feel like he's when he's on the ball, especially into space on the right-hand side, he just doesn't seem very very comfortable in possession and um, his passing is a bit can be a bit hit and miss and um, he just he just doesn't seem that that to have that much quality in the final third and hopefully that's what Emerson can bring to us and I'm excited I'm very excited to finally have a right back uh, through the door our first right back signing what since Aurier no door obviously signed Doherty last summer but um, hopefully he's our first one that we can really improve on um, pretty much since Walker's left that's what we've all been dreaming of since 2017 so he's it's finally to get some fresh blood in there it's exciting um, I, I think the signing probably I don't know what it means for Doherty but probably not very good things because hasn't started the season you know from Doherty's point of view you know um, when Nuno's come in, you're, he's probably thinking I'm going to get a new lease of life. Um, now, now I've got my old manager back, and he got the best out of me, and all that kind of stuff. And then he's come start of the season, and Tanganga is ahead of him, and he's yes. like, oh god, so maybe I'm not. And then, and then not only is Tanganga ahead of him on deadline day, we've signed another right back as well. So it might, doesn't I think it probably spells bad news for him, doesn't it? Yeah, all this I mean, kind of stuff. Yeah, it does. I mean, I think that if a bid did come in for him, Nuno would be happy to sell him and that would have been him selling him two years in a row. Um, I feel, I, in a way, I feel bad for him because I think he probably was really excited by Nuno probably, coming yeah. in and it's probably worked out really badly for him. So yeah. in that sense, I do feel bad. But unfortunately... Um, he just has to up his game and it's on him and I think every time he's I played think he has it in him man at the moment he doesn't have it in him he doesn't have the qualities uh, to play at right back I mean for us I mean, yeah, what, does he, what, what has he ever shown ever yeah and even at Wolves I know he was great at Wolves but he was given so much freedom so much freedom he was it wasn't it wasn't even necessarily because of how good of a player he was is why he was so good at Wolves it was just because he was literally on that right he was literally like a right um, forward playing at right wing back and he was given so much space and freedom to just um, arrive in the box every single time that so many so much so many times he was found in space in the box and in attacking positions because no one was picking him up because they yeah. were concentrated on other players and because they were doubling up on the Dharma Traore and whatever and, and whatever and so time after time he was able to just find those spaces and, and um, contribute in attacking senses but now he's in a better team especially at right in a back four where he's given a lot more responsibility to control the right flank. He's just not up to it. No, he's, he's not. just not up to it. But in terms of Emerson, hopefully he will be. And that's what I'm hoping. Physically, he seems a lot more um, faster, stronger than, um, uh, not maybe Tanganga, but definitely Doherty. Definitely seems to have better quality on the ball than Tanganga. And um, I'm hoping, you know, as a Brazilian international, he's also six foot as well. So aerially, he's quite dominant against um, wingers as well, they say. So I'm very excited for and what he can bring and I can't wait to see him in the Spurs shirt yeah uh, and there's a lot of like conflicting reports over Emerson about how good he is or how bad he is or what kind of style of defender he is or uh, but I am very excited to see him getting off the ground running and, and starting to get into the side but yeah but it's important to remember as much as um, Barcelona did let him go um, they signed him not they only signed him in um, I think it was like June 
Um, they signed him from Bet, re-signed him from Betis. Right. And they, was, they literally at the beginning of August. Was it beginning of August? He uh, literally had this ceremony on the new camp, um, you know, with fans in stadiums yeah, and all this and stuff. and all this stuff. He had uh, this massive uh, thing, and John Laporta comes on the pitch in that in that um, thing and was talking about him in an interview for Barcelona TV or whatever it, it may be. And they say, this guy is a massive future for Barcelona. This guy is going to be here for many years to come. And if anyone wants him, it's a 300 million euro yeah. release clause. And he said, he's going to be exactly, he's going to be our player. And he was saying how well, it's a dream to play for Barcelona. I can't wait to start my career and everything. They re-signed him because of his impressive displays for Betis as well. He was playing quite well for Betis over a two-year period. And um, and he who was like right back of the year in Spain last year was he? Did he get Betis, right back yeah. of the year? Oh, for, R- Betis is right back of Betis, the year. Betis, yeah, yeah. No, no, no La, La Liga. Liga right back of, of the year. Okay, so you got the team of the year basically. Apparently so, yeah. That's interesting. So that's that's positive as well. So. And also, he was involved in the first three games. He started one of them, but he was involved in the first three games of the season for Barcelona as well. So they were clearly ready to use him and set to use him. Um, but clearly, their financial struggles gave us an opportunity to step in and um, and sign him up, which is which is why we've got this opportunity. So I think um, that I think people may be thinking of why would Barcelona let him go so easy if uh, if he was that good I'm not l- looking at the situation you know they let Griezmann go on deadline day you know what I mean that's how bad their financial situation yeah. has been so um, it's that, just because they let him go doesn't mean he's no good I saw a lot of tweets on um, underneath the kind of posts from Barcelona saying he's going to Tottenham and a lot of the fans there were angry at the, at the kind of um, transfer. They were saying that he's definitely the best right back at the club at the moment <clears throat> and stuff like that. And also, I don't know if you follow the, the Euro expert. Um, he's got a YouTube channel as well. And, you know, he, he just comments a lot on European football. I think he goes I know, a few I know on who he is. Matt Hayes' channel sometimes yeah, 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 and all yeah. that kind of stuff. He was saying uh, Tottenham are getting the best uh, right back in La Liga as well. So, um, you know, a lot of Spurs fans were airing caution to this transfer and he was just like pouring complete cold water on that, saying this guy's a top player. Well, let's so we'll be honest, let's be honest it's, but it's, even, if, uh, even if it is a bit of a risk, I, I, don't, I think clearly he's, I think he's going to be a good player, but even if it is a bit of a risk, it's worth taking the risk of giving our options, isn't it? Oh, that's for sure. That's the truth. So um, I think it's worth taking a punt, even if, even if there's a risk that he's not as good as people think he yeah, is. Yeah, completely agree. 